everybody, it's Leia. In this video, I want to share with you a little exercise you can use to get to know your tarot and oracle card decks better. You may have heard the advice by now, if you've been working with oracle and especially tarot cards, to build a good relationship between you and your deck. This can be done in several ways. For example, sleeping with your cards, which is something I personally love doing, pulling a card from the deck every day, also known as a daily draw, you know, to provide you with a message, to meditate upon, etc, etc. What we are doing here is what you could consider an icebreaker when you get a new deck. A little getting to know you moment, if you will. There are many variations of this spread we'll be doing and the particular one that appears in this video I found on the forum for Eclectic Tarot. It's by Fire Raven in a post dating back to 2005. I'll post the link in the description to give you a point of reference if you want. So I actually want to conduct a deck interview, first with a tarot card deck and then an oracle card deck, so we can see the differences in interpretation depending on what card system we are interviewing. For the tarot deck, I am choosing to work with my Gothic Tarot of Vampires cards. That's them right there, all laid out. And this is what the box looks like. I'd say it's up to you if you want to read the cards intuitively or familiarize yourself first with their general meanings before doing the interview. In my case, I will be combining both my intuition and the associated traditional card meanings to get my answers. As you can see, we have six cards and these are to answer six questions, with the first one being, tell me about yourself. What is your most important characteristic? And the card that corresponds to that is this one right here. That's card number one. And we have the Five of Swords. So take a good look at it before I lay it back down. This card indicates victory after a conflict. And I feel that the deck is answering my question by saying it's a great tool for revealing the good that can be found in difficult situations. Which makes perfect sense, as I use my darker decks, like this one, to do shadow work with. I enjoy finding the treasure, you could say, in challenges, and this deck is telling me right now that being able to do that is its most important characteristic. And so for the second question, which is answered by that card right there, it is, what are your strengths as a deck? And we have the Six of Cups, or in this case, Chalices. I feel that the nostalgia aspect of this card is what is jumping out at me right now. So if you noticed, and you can rewind the video a little bit if you want to see in detail, there's this person looking out his window at the two kids as though he's recalling the time when he was their age. How that answers the question to me is, this deck is telling me that it is good with showing what's beautiful about your past. Even if you consider an event to have been a dark time in your life, these cards can help you appreciate the blessings from that moment. As for question number three, we have, what are your limits as a deck? And we're going to be turning over that card right there. It is... Number two from the Major Arcana, the High Priestess. And if you notice before I lay the card back down, she looks very different from the traditional High Priestess. So in a Rider Waite Smith deck, which is one of the traditional tarot systems, the High Priestess speaks to us of intuition and higher knowledge that you discover on your own and not because anybody told it to you. In this card, with its vampire theme, it appears that wisdom is arrived at by making a choice or a sacrifice. And how that relates to our question, I feel, is you will receive a lot of formerly hidden knowledge by working with this deck. But you are limited by how far you're willing to go. This deck works well with those who aren't afraid to explore their dark side and expose it to the light. So those who prefer a very bright and cheery approach will likely not want to work with these cards. And then, question number four, which is answered by that card, is what do you bring to the table? What are you here to teach me? And for that, we have the Ace of Chalices. 
This being a vampire deck, blood, as seen in the cup, symbolizes life and nourishment. The suit of cups traditionally deal with feelings, relationships, and emotions, so I feel like I am being told that this deck can teach me more about the importance of my feelings and relationships, including the one I have with myself. Actually, maybe most especially my relationship with myself, as this deck specializes in going within, as we've seen. Next up, question number five, which that card right there answers is how can I best learn from and collaborate with you? And our card is the Seven of Pentacles. In this deck, this card's meaning isn't very much like in the traditional tarot. This is about material things and ambition, even to the point where you want what other people have. And I think that what this is saying is these cards are best used not for amassing material possessions, not that there's anything the matter with that on its own, by itself, but just that it goes deeper than the material aspect of life. This deck, I mean, these cards. I feel that it's telling me to indeed want more and it will help me find insights that can get me there. Just as long as my desire transcends the material level, in this case, as I work with this deck. And last but not least, question number six which, of course, is answered by that card right there, is what is the potential outcome of our working relationship? And we have number 11, Justice from the Major Arcana. So if you take a look at it for a moment, it appears frightening because what isn't scary about someone coming at you through your rolled up car window? But you know, all this really signifies is there is a higher order in the universe that you can't hide from nor escape. And I think that this deck and I together are going to have a very powerful working relationship where we make the connection between cause and effect in readings, where we attempt to understand what is going on behind a situation. Like, what's the deeper meaning or lesson there? So I want to say at this point that the answers you come up with are about your own relationship with a deck, of course, even if other people conduct the same interview with these same cards, regardless of the similarities, what you receive is meaningful to you and relative to who you are. And if it helps, I think that you should go ahead and write the answers that come up in a journal. Using a journal for your personal relationship with your tarot decks and oracle decks I find is very helpful. A lot of stuff will come out that you probably wouldn't even realize if you just took a look at the cards. Actually writing your insights down helps so much. Now let's see what an oracle card deck could possibly have to answer to the same questions. In this instance, I am using Wisdom of the House of Night Oracle Cards, which is another deck I intend to do a video review on, so stay tuned for that if you've been wondering whether to get these cards or not, or if you are simply a House of Night fan. And this is the box right here. And I want to say too that I do notice that my fingerprints are on the backs of these cards. That's how shiny they are. And back to question number one, which corresponds to that card as we know. Tell me about yourself. What is your most important characteristic? And for that, we have fulfillment. This tells me that these cards are great at showing us what we already have, that we can be grateful for. It reflects to us what riches we have in life, so we know that we don't have to strive or struggle to achieve good. Rather, there is already good in our lives, and we just have to see it to activate it and attract more of it. Question number two, for that card right there, what are your strengths as a deck? And here is listening. I get the feeling this is saying that this deck is designed to have the kind of relationship with you, where you feel that its responses to your questions are a result of there being a genuine, caring, and supportive connection. I feel that card decks, be they tarot or oracle, have a life of their own and if we let them interact with us more fully, we can see what personality each deck has. And this one apparently is a listener. Third question. 
What are your limits as a deck? And our card is Strength. This is a very encouraging card. It tells us that we are equipped to handle challenges if we only look within so that we can draw our power out from there. How I relate that to the question is, there is much more depth to these cards, but you have to really look beneath the surface to find it. After all, this deck is based on the series of books for young adults of the same name, so some readers may overlook this deck, you know, some oracle card readers. I've found it to be pretty inspiring though. I think that it's much more than a teen oracle card deck, as it might appear to be on the outside. Question number four. What do you bring to the table? What are you here to teach me? And in answer to that, we have confidence. From what I've seen in working with these oracle cards, the messages are very self-affirming. You are celebrated. The guidance given encourages you to see your strengths, to see your beauty, and I feel that the answer this card is giving for this question is for me on a personal level, more than on a professional reading level with clients. So I feel like it's actually speaking to me that it can teach me to be more confident. And then question number five for that card, how can I best learn from and collaborate with you? And the answer is summon. I love this. It is such a direct answer to the question and does make me feel that the deck is listening to me. What I feel this is saying is, anytime I wish to work with this deck, all I have to do is get into that space where I am open to receiving answers, and they will be there. Our final question, number six, is what is the potential outcome of our working relationship? So I'm just going to flip that card right there over. This is the moon. Don't you just find the artwork on these cards gorgeous? I personally think so. So back to the moon. When you pull this card, it is an indication to use your intuition to see beneath the surface, for you to not accept things at face value. It seems these cards are saying they are a great trigger for intuition. And in terms of a working relationship, where clients are involved as well, this is very helpful, so insights come through that the people being read can use to transform their lives beyond just the surface level. And don't be fooled by the shorter answers that I've given with these cards as compared to when we did the tarot interview. I feel that the answers are a little shorter just because the symbology of this deck or oracle cards in general, some of them have deeper symbology, but Oracle cards in general, I feel, don't have as much background, that's a good word I would say, as a tarot deck does, where it draws on so much more of the traditional meanings and all these other systems or modalities of reading, and I'm not even going to get into all that now, but I think you get what I mean. If you watch my video that tells the difference between Oracle cards and tarot cards, you will see that I explain how oracle cards are a little bit more looser in their meanings. They don't follow a strict system the way that tarot does. So that's why the answers, I feel, are more to the point, not as long as when we were doing the tarot interview with gothic tarot of vampires. And so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. As usual, I had a lot of fun putting this together, and I hope you find it useful. So, I'm sure that the answers that come up for you, even if you use the same decks, are going to be different, but these are just examples of how you can conduct this kind of an interview. I'll be back really soon with a lot more fun videos in store for you, so remember to subscribe! In the meantime, bye for now. Namaste.